And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce a visionary. He took a simple idea and transformed an industry, disrupting the status quo and changing how many people view content in their homes. He's even responsible for the term binge watching, as his service allows people to watch an entire season of a TV program in just one weekend, literally unheard of in the past. Of course, I'm talking about Reed Hastings, who co-founded Netflix in 1997. He began with just a handful of employees working on folding tables out of a small office near Santa Cruz. Now, the streaming business employs more than 2,000 employees around the world, has more than 69 million members in more than 60 countries and territories. An active philanthropist, Reed is known for being generous with both his time and his money, often sharing lessons he's learned with young startups. We're fortunate that he's agreed to share time with us to talk about building a global internet TV network, as Netflix intends to be in nearly every country by the end of 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Network Netflix and our keynote speaker this morning, Reed Hastings. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. It's great to see you all here. Entertainment and technology are continuing to transform each other as they have been doing for over a hundred years. From radio to broadcast TV, broadcast TV to cable TV, and now to internet TV, which eat with each of these bringing a better experience. With broadcast TV, starting in the 1950s, you could watch video in your home. And that was a miracle at the time. But with broadcast TV, you had only a few networks, and so not much choice. Then came cable TV, where you had hundreds of networks to scroll through. But what consumers really wanted was to be able to choose when to watch. The VCR let them do that to some degree, recording films and TV series to watch later. The DVR made the VCR a little less clunky. The VCR and DVR were early efforts to give people what they wanted, on-demand television. With the internet, we can finally give people what they have always wanted. We can now put consumers across the world in the driver's seat when it comes to when and where they want to watch. Internet TV allows us to redefine what is possible. Great stories at your fingertips, on your smart TV, on your phone, tablet, and laptop. You can start pause, and resume watching whenever and wherever you feel like it. You don't have to sit through commercials or be at the mercy of an 8 p.m. tune-in. You just click and watch. A simple but revolutionary shift from corporate to consumer control. The Netflix service is personalized for you and every other member of your household. We offer movies, and TV shows for every taste and every age. Shows that inform, that provoke, that engage, that delight. We are just beginning to break down the barriers to the world's best storytellers can reach audiences all over the world. We're shooting a sports comedy in Mexico, a crime drama in Italy, and a dystopian film about bioengineering in Korea. The possibilities of building connections between cultures and people are endless and important. That's why we're here to talk this morning. We're going to talk about how the internet is changing television and how we're at the start of a global revolution. Wasn't that long ago we came to CES to announce our first CE partnership integrating Netflix into an LG Blu-ray player. 
At that time, eight years ago, we had just started streaming. CE firms were just beginning to figure out how to integrate the internet into entertainment devices. Since then, Netflix has reached almost half of all US households, something that it took the cable industry over 20 years to achieve. Globally, we're now in more than 70 million homes, and people watch Netflix all over the world on any internet-connected device. TuneIn has been replaced by personal choice. We live in an on-demand world, and there's no going back. You can see this change in the Netflix viewing stats. In the fourth quarter, people watched 12 billion hours of Netflix, up from eight and a quarter billion a year ago. Several factors have made this shift possible. The internet is getting faster and more reliable. Devices, all the stuff you've seen here this week, are getting smarter, cheaper, and more widely adopted. Internet speeds have been increasing steadily, with a global average climbing 40% since 2013. While some countries are making more progress than others, they've all figured out that a robust internet is key to economic prosperity and a better quality of life. The internet allows us to constantly experiment and improve, to learn and get better. At Netflix, we're always testing what works for consumers to remove what frustrates them and to provide them with an improving experience. Faster, smoother internet delivery, more intuitive choosing, ubiquity across devices, these are the things that make Netflix better. Rapid innovation allows us to change the game when it comes to storytelling. Netflix was the first to put up all episodes at once, to give consumers complete control, and to start the binge era. We were also the first to release stories across a global footprint, allowing members, whether in Argentina or Finland, to be able to enjoy the same great story at the exact same moment. So let's break down what we're doing to make internet TV even better. Our talented engineers are constantly testing to compress more data through more advanced encoding. The goal is to deliver data so fast and well on any device in any broadband condition. This adaptive streaming is facilitated by our Open Connect network, caching content worldwide wherever internet service providers request it. We do this for free because it helps ISPs manage the Netflix traffic requested by our common customers. This highly efficient and decentralized network delivers Netflix video to our members in over 60 countries. It allows us to deliver over 125 million hours a day of entertainment across the Americas, Europe, and Asia Pacific. For nearly a decade, we have collaborated closely with CE companies to create the best possible consumer experience. Apple, Samsung, LG, Microsoft, Sony, Google, Nintendo, Vizio, and Panasonic, to name a few. We have helped these companies unlock the value of smart devices and along the way help consumers to discover the value of entertainment on demand. Netflix is ready to stream in millions of smart TVs, Blu-ray players, and game consoles the minute consumers bring them home from the store on over a thousand different models. There are remote controls in over 70 countries that feature instant access to Netflix with a simple, dedicated button. The Netflix UI is already in 17 languages, and content can be viewed with any mix of subtitle and voice languages, which can even be changed in the middle of a movie. Our app is also available everywhere in the iOS and Android universe, and we're working with phone and cable companies around the world to allow consumers to sign up and pay for Netflix with a single click. Our consumer electronic company partners have been critical to our success. We hope we are equally important to them. 
We want Netflix to work incredibly well, whether you are watching in the living room, in the metro, or at 30,000 feet on Virgin America. We want your video to start instantly and be the highest possible resolution. We want you able to pick up right where you left off of your favorite series, no matter what device you are using or where you are. And we want what you see to be pleasing to the eye and simple to use, whether it is on an iPhone, a Samsung tablet, or a Sony smart TV. While continually improving the video and audio experience, we also seek to, be, to find the right movie or series to put in front of you at the right time. We do this through continuous learning by understanding what each member watches, whether they leave after 10 minutes, or whether they come back to complete the series or not. Every year, we do hundreds of A-B tests to refine what we present to each of our members. We test different variations of title art or the look of our user interface, and the features like automatic post-play, and our members pick the winners, resulting in more viewing, more engagement, and more satisfaction. One day, we hope to get so good at suggestions that we're able to show you exactly the right film or TV show for your mood when you turn on Netflix. We still have a ways to go, but each day we're getting better and better at delighting our members. The internet allows us to deliver amazing video and audio quality, and we're enabling our creative partners to make the most of that potential. Two years ago at CES, we introduced Netflix in 4K Ultra HD. Today, Netflix is the leading creator of 4K content, and Netflix original series and films are primarily being done in 4K. Later this year, we will roll out high dynamic range, which makes colors brighter and truer, creating a visceral sensation that's pretty amazing. We have over 1,000 engineers focusing on better global delivery, more intuitive UIs, credible picture and audio quality. They do this in the service of amazing stories around the world. Let's take a look at what's on Netflix and what's coming soon. This is exactly where I am supposed to be right now. The universe brought us together. I'm a part of a community that I love. Sometimes you know something's coming, but you feel it in the air. You will enjoy the greatest adventure of all. We had no idea what we were in for. I will win, and I will leave a legacy. You mean we will? You feel joy and pleasure. That's just the beginning. You are no longer just you. I still believe the world is good. This is the true meaning of community. I feel like this is my new favorite show. You say that about every show. Because right now, actually, all shows are amazing. It's the golden age of television. Can we please not talk during the show? The work is not yet finished. What are you gonna do? Whatever it takes. If you don't stop fighting, you could change the world. What is it that has brought this family together? Victory! like to participate in the birth of something extraordinary. We got food, we got booze, we got attractive people. Remember, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> I'm saying to the world, this 
is how I feel. Stand up and say we're different. We're the strong ones, and you can't break us. It's love. It's two people connecting with four other people and aliens. Good morning. I'm Ted Sarandos, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our journey from distributor of content to a major global creator of content. This year, we expect to offer our members over 600 hours of high quality original programming from some of the world's most talented people, and the only place you'll find it is on Netflix. And when I started at Netflix in 2000, we already had our eyes on streaming. The easiest way in those days to bring movies to people was to put them on a DVD and put them in the mail. About eight years ago, the cost of digital delivery and the cost of postal delivery crossed. And there was no looking back, especially not when you used to look like this. <laughs> With the internet, global distribution no longer needs to be fragmented. It means that everyone, pretty much everywhere, should see, be able to see great films and TV shows at the exact same moment. The technology is there. It's the business models that now stand in the way. That's a big reason we decided to do original programming. In 2013, we debuted House of Cards, all episodes at once to all of our members worldwide. It was a shocker of an opening statement. We use the internet to bring compelling, a compelling universal drama directed by the great David Fincher, starring the amazing Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright, to millions of people around the world to enjoy, how and when they wanted it. And they loved it. And binge viewing was born. At Netflix, we have what we call a freedom and responsibility culture, which means that Netflix executives get a lot of freedom to innovate in our fast-moving business. It also means that we're responsible for delivering the goods. We treat the filmmakers the exact same way. We hire strong creatives. We let them create compelling worlds, whether it's 1980s Columbia in Narcos, Hell's Kitchen in our Marvel series Jessica Jones, or the ancient Silk Road in Marco Polo. We're going to soon be inviting our members to 1953 England, where a young woman assume the weightiest of responsibilities at a critical moment in history. Later this year, Netflix will premiere the first season of The Crown. It is the epic story of Queen Elizabeth set against the, an empire, the collapse of an empire and the creation of modern Britain. Featuring Claire Foy as Queen Elizabeth, Matt Smith as Prince Philip, written by Peter Morgan and directed by Stephen Daldry, please enjoy the first ever look at the crown. Now, in case that clip would lead you to believe that Netflix is PBS or BBC, that would not be right. Uh, it is true that we believe in quality, great visuals, well-written scripts, awards-worthy acting. But as you saw in that first sizzle reel, we love stories of all sorts, highbrow, lowbrow, funny, sad, scary, you name it. We have that luxury thanks to the internet. Linear TV, the kind we all grew up on, must aggregate a large audience at a given time of day and hope that whatever they're showing will attract enough viewers. With Netflix, members can enjoy a show anytime. And based on their viewing habits, we can put the right one in front of them each and every time. That means we can spend less on marketing and still generate higher viewership, even from smaller, quirkier, less traditionally commercial material that would traditionally have a tough time finding a meaningful audience. That means we could take more risk. To make a baseball analogy, linear TV only scores with home runs. We score with home runs too, but we also score with singles and doubles and triples. Now at Netflix, we famously use big data to help us size our investments in different types of programming. This allows us to deliver a spectacularly broad range of series and films to our members without having to worry about the reach of any one single title at any one moment. We can have content that appeals to a five-year-old, a teen, or their grandparents all living in the same household. 
Because of this unique strength, we can commit to producing and publishing books rather than chapters. We can give creators a chance to concentrate on multi-episode story arcs rather than pilots. Creator can work on episode 11, confident that very recently the viewer has enjoyed episode one through 10. They could develop episodes that are not all exactly 22 or 44 minutes long. They could take 10 episodes or 20 episodes to tell their stories. Pilots, the fall season, summer repates, live ratings, all of the constraints of linear television are falling away one by one. A few months ago, we began premiering theatrical quality original films on Netflix. And just as we changed how TV series are distributed, we're offering to our members first-rate movies from stars and creators like Brad Pitt, Adam Sandler, Donnie Yen, Michelle Yeoh, Christopher Guest, Bong Yak Ho, Ricky Gervais, Judd Apatow, and Angelina Jolie. To be clear, we are not anti-theater. We're just pro-movies. We think giving people what they want in a timely manner and at a reasonable price is great for the movie industry because it removes one of the key reasons people resort to piracy. In the first six months after we launched in Australia, and incumbent broadcasters created competing SVOD services, BitTorrent usage in Australia dropped by 14%. Viewed against this backdrop of diversity of talent that we work with and the range of subject matters we could tackle and find a good sized audience for, it's all pretty remarkable. Our first original film, Beasts of No Nation, is a gripping drama about African child soldiers written, uh, produced on location in Ghana written and directed by Kerry Fuganaga. And one of the film's stars, Abraham Atta, was an elementary school kid discovered playing football with his buddies by Kerry. One of our most popular TV series, Orange is the New Black, returning later this year for its fourth season, is set in a woman's prison, featuring characters of all ages, races, economic backgrounds, and really unique for television, different sizes and shapes. Our original documentaries focus on subject matters that range from the Ukrainian revolution to a murder mystery in Wisconsin, from great chefs to bad baseball teams, from Keith Richards to Nina Simone. There is no place in the world that consumers can find a wider range of quality documentaries than on Netflix. Coming later this year, we have a series that is both incredibly diverse and broadly appealing. It comes from the legendary Australian director Baz Luhrmann and tells the story of that moment when a crumbling crime-ridden New York City gave birth to disco, graffiti, and hip hop, art forms that are now part of every culture on the planet. Please enjoy never a never before seen preview of The Get Down, premiering in 2016 only on Netflix. Great stories come from everywhere. We're working with local storytellers right now in Brazil, Cambodia, Canada, Colombia, France, Italy, Japan, Korea, Mexico, the UK, and the United States, and that list is only gonna grow over time. We're making kids' cartoons, teen dramas, sci-fi thrillers, adult comedies, and historical epics. We're working in multiple language, and if we've seen through the success of our series Narcos, that can be successful across all territories, even when the original language is not English. We're in a unique position to bring the world's stories to the world's people. Over the last 70 years, consumers have been at the mercy of others when it comes to television. The shows and movies they want to watch are subject to business models that they do not understand and they do not care about. All they know is frustration. That's the insight Netflix is built on. Whether it's an unfair late fee for a DVD, a or a discriminatory patchwork of global content availability, or technologies that confound common sense and human happiness, our job as business people and as innovators is to make it easy for people to find the entertainment that they love. The internet is changing TV. Now we want to talk about that a little bit, and we want to talk about how that is changing for consumers and creators alike. And to do that, please welcome me, welcome the star of our upcoming documentary series, Chelsea Does, Chelsea Handler. You can cry. Hi. Tears. Yeah. You can <laughs> Hi. Tears. Welcome.
Welcome, Chelsea. Thank you. Stop. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, nice yeah. to see you again. You too. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, so Chelsea does is going to premiere later this month at, Sun, at the Sundance Film Festival. Yes, we're going to Sundance. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, and then followed right, right away with a premiere on Netflix. Tell us just a little bit about Chelsea Does. I, I went to Netflix and I pitched four ideas. I said I want to do something I had never, I had no experience in, something vastly different than I had done before. And I wanted to explore the topics of racism, marriage, because I've never been interested in it. <laughs> until Sorry. I'm 40, now I'm interested and have no viable options. <laughs> um, racism, marriage, uh, Silicon Valley, because I didn't know how to pronounce silicone. I thought it was a breast implant, and then Reed Hastings politely told me it was silicon. <laughs> and then drugs, they paid me to do drugs. I went to Peru and did ayahuasca, so it's the best job in the world, everybody. <laughs> so Chelsea Does is coming this month, and later this year, we're gonna premiere the Chelsea Handler talk show. Yes, we are. And everywhere I go, people are so excited to get that back. So since we've been showing some sneak previews here for CES audiences only, how about we show them a sneak preview of some of the interview stuff we have coming? Okay, so you want to bring some people out? Let's Is that do a it. hint? Let's okay. try it. Let's try okay, it. Okay, let's bring out some stars from the network. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, please join us in welcoming the star of the Netflix original series Arrested Development, Bojack Horseman, and premiering later this year, Flaked, Will Arnett. You, nice Will. to see you too, Chelsea. <laughs> also welcome the star of the Netflix original series, Marvel's Jessica Jones, Kristen Ritter. <laughs> and the Golden Globe nominated star of the Netflix original series, Narcos, Wagner Mora. Welcome, everybody. Okay, welcome. Welcome to America, Wagner. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this every day here. I, yes, it is. It's like this all the time. <laughs> so you were telling us, he was telling us a fascinating story because he, you're from Brazil, right? And you shoot the show in Colombia, and now you have to come to Vegas. <laughs> first, first time in Vegas, yeah. This is your first time in Las Vegas? First time in Las How Vegas. How do you like it? It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really homey, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, homie. it's an intimate town. <laughs> it's exactly, yeah. Have you ever gambled? No. Will you gamble today? I will today, yeah, tonight. So tell us about the, the impact. Uh, tell us about how you feel about having a show, because I know that your manager, we were on the plane together yesterday, we all flew commercial. And um, <laughs> <laughs> his manager was telling us that he just wanted to be, he said, I don't want to do a show, I don't want to do a big show, I don't want to travel, I just, I'm making a good living as an actor in Brazil, I don't want to be a big star. <laughs> and now here you are in Las Vegas with Britney yeah. Spears, she's in the audience tonight. Is she? <laughs> she is. Hi, Britney. <laughs> uh, no, it's been great. I mean, um, Narcos has been a great, a great experience in my life. Uh, I th really think we have a very unique show, very different kind of show. It's um, our director, Jose Padilla, the guy who created the show. He, he's interest in, interested in trying to understand a certain reality and then trying to explain it to other people. So in all of his films, you're gonna see, he's gonna have a voice over explaining things to people and, and, uh, and then this show is about the birth of the drug trade, the birth of narco-trafficking. And of course, we couldn't do this without talking about Colombia and the Medellin cartel. So one, one of the greatest things about narcos, I think, is that the whole show is shot in Colombia, in locations in Colombia. We have a big international cast, actors from, from here, from the States, from Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Colombia. Uh, it's spoken in English and in Spanish because I don't think people are buying those Second World... Uh, they are not buying anymore Second World War films where German people speak English with a German accent. I think that's super <laughs> weird. So I think this brings, us, uh, 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 brings to Narcos a certain amount of authenticity, which I think is really, really cool. And we are really proud of the show. We're, 
it's been well, a Well, and a huge joy. show in America, with a Spanish show. You said earlier that you were so surprised that it's such a huge hit in America because, you know, people have a hard time reading here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean I grew up, as a Brazilian, I grew up watching, you know, American films, which it, even when I didn't speak English, I don't even know if I, if I do, but... At that time, <laughs> at that time, I didn't speak a word of English, and we are used to see. Wait, when things. didn't you speak English? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. How? No, no. How recently did you learn English? Of, uh, I don't know. Kind, of, some. I've been trying to improve it. Your English is pretty good. Thank you. I mean, I, That's I wouldn't think compliment. that you just learned English. <laughs> Thank you. Very yeah, give him a round of applause. Yeah, one clap. For I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> just the one. But guy. I had to learn Spanish. I didn't know a word of Spanish. I, I could speak a little English, but I didn't know Spanish. I had to learn Spanish in order to do Narcos because, as you know, we speak Portuguese in Brazil. <laughs> and what, are, what were we talking about? I was just about? asking you when you learned English, and then you went yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are, we are, we are, so we are used to watching an films and, and, and things in, in, with subtitles in Brazil. You know, American films, Italian films, and, and, and we are, we were, the, the fact that in American audiences, you guys consume your own content, your own films, which you have, you have the biggest industry in the world. So we, one of the things that makes me really happy about Narcos is that American audiences, we, you guys embraced the, a show that's, I think 70% of the show is spoken in, About 80%. in Spanish. 80, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Well, we're happy to have you. You gained well, how much weight, uh, weight did you have to gain for? Forty pounds. Forty pounds. Wow. Yeah. And wow. then you wore a fat suit on top of that, right? What? Sorry. Oh, is that just you speak body? so fast? I, can I can I switch places oh, with you? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> can I be close to her yeah, no, so please, I can please, I can yeah, please. I can look at her mouth and yeah. why his why why she's <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, you're so cozy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 the belly. But did you, did you have to wear a fat suit? Because you said you had to wear a fat suit. In the suit. last, I mean, now I'm, because Pablo is, um, he was getting bigger and. How does cocaine make you fat? <laughs> he didn't, he didn't do cocaine. Spoiler alert. Oh. Pablo like, Pablo like to smoke marijuana who makes you, makes people fat. And Kristen, you just got back from, wait, tell everybody where you went because it was a crazy. Yeah, um, so we went to Italy, Spain, uh, Japan, Brazil. Um, I, I'm probably forgetting something, but it, it's it's been completely mind blowing um, to go and and promote your show in all of these different countries. Um, Jessica Jones is a really unique character that we haven't seen before. The superhero genre is kind of a, a boy's playground, so um, it's really exciting to have this amazing you know female character uh, with a with a global audience um, come out, you know, making some noise. It's been incredibly exciting. And so for your show, they do subtitles in all the other countries, right? Yeah. And um, they just hope people figure it out? Yeah, they do subtitles, and I think in some countries, when I was watching the show, at the end, there's all of these different pages um, crediting the actors that do the dubbing. So that goes on for pages and pages and pages it, yeah. in so many countries, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It is exciting. It's a nice place to work. I mean, it it's is the, the best, best place, place to work. I mean, I don't want you to get an ego or anything. <laughs> and Will, when did you start taking yourself seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Probably on the plane ride here with you. Um, <laughs> well, uh, that's three shows on the network, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't want Arrested to Arrested Development. <laughs> yeah. Counting. Arrested Development. Yeah. Jack, horse shit. What is it yeah. called? Horse cock. <laughs> <laughs> horse cock Bojman. And... Um, <laughs> Kind of based on a true story. It's, it's, it's and, about 9.15 um, in the morning right now, by the way. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's a little early. <laughs> I'm sorry, Will and I slept together last night. <laughs> uh, and then the Love. upcoming uh, Flate is my... Uh, Flate, yeah. this is a new series. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, when I started, uh, we, you know, we, working with Netflix was on Arrested <laughs> Development. Um, and that was sort of three, four years ago. And it was Ted and Reed and, and, uh, and a dude, you know, who was like doing accounting on the back of a, of a you know, napkin. <laughs> uh, and the company has grown and the audience has grown. And I, I got to say, it's, it's interesting to, from then to now, you know, doing BoJack 
and watching you know, the, the global impact. You know, I went with Kristen for part of that trip. We were in, in Spain and Italy and having people, uh, you know, knowing that they're watching the show day in day the same time that we are here, which is such a different, you know, as Ted said before, we're just throwing out the old paradigm. It's completely gone. And now everything that you do is immediately available you know, in all these countries around the world is pretty, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, we're happy to have are jobs. You? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you were really taken with what I was saying. Like I really I'm mesmerized I'm taken by you, you, Will. Yeah. 110%. Yeah. You feel it? I got a lot yeah. going on. It's mind boggling. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's, you know what I always say to people who will listen to me that it's such a nice place to work when you can kind of go in and create a vision and then you guys are progressive enough to say, go do it. And then all of a sudden it's done. You know, I pitched you four documentaries. You said, yeah, those sound like great ideas. And that was it. And I was like, I mean, Here that's probably not a great way to tell Reed that you're running things. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great place to work. Uh, and that's all I have to say on the topic. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this this morning. It's a great way to kick off 2016 and, and uh, give CES a little treat about uh, what we have upcoming. And with both with, your, with the documentary series, with the talk show, Season two of Narcos, which is underway in Colombia right now, yeah. and Flaked, which is coming soon, and, and the, the world is awakening to, to, to Jessica Jones as we speak. So we're super excited, and thank you for joining us. Thanks. When we started Netflix nearly 20 years ago, we dreamed of the day when the internet would enable us to deliver TV shows and movies to the billions of people with whom we share the planet. It took a decade for the internet to become robust enough to make streaming a reality. Now 2016 has arrived and things have really changed. Globally, 3.2 billion people are using the internet, and 2 billion are from developing countries. That's up from 40 million in 2000. This growth has been nothing short of astonishing. People love the freedom the internet provides, the freedom to learn, to speak out, and to be entertained. Just as the power we once harnessed from the horse gave way to the combustion engine, and the transistor brought us into the information age. The internet is transformative. We are lucky to be part of this epic moment. At Netflix, our job is to make people happy, to help them discover new things and to be entertained with a fresh perspective, to inform and to ease a bit of the stress of people's daily lives, to provide a simple and affordable way to enjoy a great story. It's a big and challenging task to do this globally. Content rights are sliced and diced between TV networks and local affiliates on deals that often last a decade or more. Countries have differing attitudes to what content is appropriate. E-commerce payment systems are still developing around the world. But at the same time, Internet connectivity is getting better and better. Netflix-ready devices are already deployed throughout the world, and people love movies and TV shows. If given the opportunity, they are willing to pay a fair price rather than resort to piracy. Right now, we're in 60 countries. When I travel the world outside of these 60 countries, the number one question I get is, when is Netflix going to be available here? Because of the global reach of the internet, people have heard about our shows. They want to see Narcos and Jessica Jones and the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Today, I am delighted to announce that while we have been here on stage at CES, we switched Netflix on in Azerbaijan. 
in Vietnam, in India, in Nigeria, in Poland, in Russia, in Saudi Arabia, in Singapore, in South Korea, in Turkey, in Indonesia, and in 130 new countries. <laughs> While you have been listening to me talk, the Netflix service has gone live in nearly every country of the world but China, where we hope to also be in the future. <laughs> Today, right now, you are witnessing the birth of a global TV network. And I do mean the birth. Today, we're offering consumers around the world our incredible global catalog, original content available around the world, including licensed feature films and series. We've also added Korean and Arabic and Chinese to bring our supported languages to 21. From today onwards, we listen, we learn, we improve, we add more languages, more content, more ways for people to engage with Netflix. Over the next several years, our goal is to offer an ever-improving service with incredible Netflix shows and films coming from storytellers around the world to people around the world. The global potential is both a joy and a challenge to fulfill. Whether you are in Sydney or St. Petersburg, Singapore or Seoul, Santiago or Saskatoon, you now can be part of the internet TV revolution. No more waiting. No more watching on a schedule that's not your own. No more frustration. Just Netflix, how, when, and wherever you are in the world, today you have witnessed an incredible event. Thank you all for coming.